بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از انگلش ٹرانسلیشن آف دا مجلس آف حضرت مولانا قمر الزما صاحب کا احمد برکات ہوں وش ٹک پلیس آن ویڈنس ڈے ایٹ دار المعارف الاسلامیہ ان کریلی الہ آباد یو پی انڈیا وینس ڈے دا سکس آف رمضان فورٹین فورٹی فور کارسپونڈنگ ود دا انگلش ڈیٹ ٹوینٹی نائنتھ آف مارچ حضر والا سٹارٹس آف دس مجلس بائی کوٹنگ دی آیات آف دی قرآن مجید قد افلح من تزکا وذکر اسم ربه فصلا دی آفٹر حضر والا آلسو کوٹس قد افلح من زکاہا وقد خواب من دساہا حضر والا گوز آن تو سی عزیزو اللہ تعالی نے بار بار تزکیہ کا ذکر کیا اللہ تعالی آور ان آور اگین سپیکس اباؤٹ ریفرمیشن آف دی نفس Hazrat Wala is speaking in about the need of Kitabullah and sunnat e rasul and we have to have so much of knowledge of our Salat and our Raza that we can carry out these Ibadat which are farz upon us in such a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together with that we also need to get the knowledge of Ikhlas Sahib Durul Mukhtar, the author of Durul Mukhtar speaks about Ilmul Ikhlas being fard and what about Hasad that what is hasad we need to know have knowledge about it so that we can stay away from it what is pride and arrogance it comes in the hadith that if a person has the atom amount of pride in his heart he will not enter jannah Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah sahab used to quote inna lil ilmi tughyanun kama hiya lil mal definitely for knowledge there is rebelliousness together with knowledge comes rebelliousness just how the case is worth wealth Hazrat Maulana Abrar al-Haq sometimes he would be reading in Salat or starting his Salat he would make the Takbir and just seconds later he would then make his Takbir again the second time we learn that maybe at that time there he did not have the desired istihazar of his Niyat Hazrat Tanwi there was a garden there and they were going to make it Waqaf he started asking the people of the Majlis that what Niyat And people are thinking at that time, okay, a niyat, do you even make a niyat here? Hazrat Tanvi said, I will make the niyat that if anybody comes and sits in the shade of this garden, this is actually the niyat that I'm making, that it will be a means and a source of peace for that person. Allah Masharani speaks so much about this here from a different angle and he says that if somebody is giving something or donating something and outwardly it seems that this person does not have ikhlas, sidq and lillahi yet he then too says that do not stop him from that because it is greatly possible that the person who later on benefits from it makes a dua for him due to which he will be forgiven example sake the person gave a well and then He done it for name and sh uh, for, for name uh, 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 and uh, for ostentation so that people can praise him. Where will there be any reward for him? But a generation later or some time later someone came there, stops there, drink from its water and is so satisfied that he makes dua that oh Allah the person who put up this well, give him jazai khair. reward him do this or that due to which the person who gave that sadaqat even though it was not with ikhlas his maghfirat is made and thereafter he goes on to say that who are you first of all to come to that conclusion that he did not uh, give it with ikhlas and sincerity why are you coming to that Uh, conclusions nevertheless he says there is a great possibility of such people then to becoming uh, getting maghfirat and uh, becoming forgiven Hazrat Gangohi rahimahullah uh, writes that two people Alama Shahrani and Hazrat Shah Waliullah there's such a uh, reign of the nur and uloom and ma'arif from the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them that we, we come to understand that it is like how in the winter months how these dry leaves in abundance fall down from trees such <coughs> in such a manner this nur and ma'arif and uloom is coming from the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala down upon them 
Hazar Haji Imdadullah also speaks about the same theme and says that a person is doing something even though he does not have ikhlas and sincerity he must continue doing it because rafta rafta eventually he will come to the level of ikhlas and sincerity now ramadan this month in in essence actually has come so that our tarbiyat our reformation and our spiritual nurturing and upbringing can take place this fatak, this gate, do not made, make it, uh, open it too much and do not make it so wide. Hazrat Wala is speaking about this fatak of the heart. Don't leave it so open and wide like that, that whoever so wishes just comes and enters it. Asa ke ghair, mere khana hai dil mein kaise, ke khiyare ruk dil dar darba apna. How come, how can, Anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever enter into this uh, haram of minds, into this heart. When the gatekeeper, when the security guard at, uh, is actually my thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my deep connection and bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that is the security there that he doesn't even allow anyone to come into this heart of mine. There was a muhaddith and he was passing by and then people asked him for nasihat. He then said from sanad to sanad right up from there right till him how did this hadith uh, reach him and then he comes he quotes the whole long hadith and part of this hadith is La ilaha illallah hisni. That La ilaha illallah is my fortress. Whoever enters into it will gain salvation. Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Maulana Habibur Rahman Azmi is leaving Ilahabad now and he's going back home. And he says to Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Ahmad Sahib, Hazrat, I'm going now. But listen, Ab ke aunga to aap ko ek hadith sunaunga. That when I come again, then I will uh, relate one hadith to you. But it was meant to be that he never returned uh, and he could not come back after that particular suffer that that was meant to be. But what I'm trying to tell you from this year is the importance our mashayikh had of one one hadith. Today, we sit, we listen to hadith, but we don't even listen to it with the ears of the heart. Nevertheless, I have this kitab in front of me and this is actually my reason of wanting to read it out to you. Uh, Hazrat Tanwi has written so passionately here. Uh, he has written, Al-Mujahidu Man Jahad Nafsahu The genuine Mujahid and warrior in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who actually tackles and fights his ego and his nafs. Also, he quotes another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which reads Raja'na min al-jihad al-azghari ila jihad al-akbar that we have returned from the minor jihad and now we are actually coming to the tough part of it which is the jihad al-akbar which is our everyday life and the different trials, tribulations and temptations that will come our way and how will we tackle this, how will we fight this ego and this nafs of ours. Don't make this heart, uh, this heart of yours, uh, this lo a lodge that anybody who comes pass by uh, comes and sit in there. This is the tajalli gah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the place where the fountain of the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually descends into the hearts of people. And Allah ta'ala yeah, has so much of honor and ghayrat. Then where will he come into a place which, which is filled with this, that and the other? So Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of making hifazat of our hearts. So all our sufiyah and our mashayikh always maintained and emphasized that the heart be free of all others 
all other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ma'abuda illa Allah. There is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah. When we say this year, we read the heart of shirk ajali, the major type of shirk, because there can be no deity worthy of worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, la maqsuda illa Allah, when we say this year, actually we are reading the heart uh, uh, and purifying it from shirk khafi that we're doing this but we got no goal and objective other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean here we believe in Allah but it is greatly possible when we do some deed we have some ulterior motive we have some goal and objective doing it to please somebody else so that will be regarded as shirk khafi and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us about shirk khafi inna yaseer al riya is shirkun that the slightest type of riya is shirk now specifically Siyam and Roza the khususiyat and the salient feature and speciality of this is that it is free completely more than any other act of worship from shirk it rather it has what can we say the least amount of probability of shirk coming into it and it is for this reason that Allah Ta'ala says As-Sawmuli wa ana ajzibih The fasting is for me and I will give its reward meaning by and large you will never know if the next person is keeping Siyam and Raza or not <coughs> So Allah Ta'ala give us najat and complete salvation and freedom from shirk khafi and shirk jali Allah ta Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Mia Faruqi asked Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Saab I mean he was a graduate of Al Azhar he came to spend time with Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Saab he said Hazrat how did Hazrat Sheikh Abdul Qadir he used to say and uh, address the people in his majlis Eh Mushriko Oh you uh, who ascribe partners to Allah but he was addressing Muslims So, Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib said, Yes, so long as there is uh, ostentation and show in a person, then we can say there are great signs of shirk and uh, ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with within a person. Nevertheless, Allah ta'ala tamam shirkiyat se najat de. Allah ta'ala give us complete najat, freedom and salvation from every type of shirk. So Al Mujahidu Man Jahada Nafsa a true and a genuine Mujahid is the one who fights his ego and his nafs. Rajana Minal Jihadil Azghari ila Jihadil Akbar. We have returned the Sahaba. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we understanding there when they came back from the battlefield that we are returning from the minor jihad and coming to the major jihad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so uh, important. So to flaw and the outside dushman and enemy is so apparent and we have defeated him also maybe in the battlefield. But we are unaware and we don't even know, rather we have no slightest idea of the internal dushman, the, 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 the enemy that lies within this nafs and this ego that's telling us on a daily basis, swaying us to go in the direction of wrong and evil. Now this is not so difficult because Allah Ta'ala Himself says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها that Allah Ta'ala will not put upon a person something that is beyond his capability and his capacity. Now, I had a great opportunity of spending much time with Hazrat Maulana Abrarul Haqsab. If you really ask me, my third Sheikh was Hazrat Maulana Abrarul Haqsab. He would come and he would stay here for weeks. And Hazrat Wala is quoting and speaking about an incident with Hazrat Maulana Abrarul Haqsab. Uh, I'm not getting it too well, but I understand some parts of it here that. The incident goes about the person then, after the person comes out, enters the room and then opens that box and then steals 10 rupees. 
So what was it? So the person was there in the companionship of that wealth and then he was not saved from the trial and the tribulation of that particular trial, uh, test that comes with wealth and eventually he then stole and then thereafter he went on to say Isi tara aura te ki sohbet se bacho like how you, you save yourself from the companionship of wealth you also save yourself from the companionship of women folk Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah sahab would not even want to talk rather from very far he would do this and that and finish it up and wrap it up and that's it so the taqwa and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chashmo band gosho labbo band gosho band gar nabini nure haq barman bakhand shut the eyes zip the lips and plug those ears then too if you cannot see the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then laugh at me you know on one occasion we were in Bombay there at the harbour and Hazrat Mawlana Hakim Akhtar Saab uh, then told us looking at those huge rocks you know uh, on the shore just before uh, the buildings and all those huge hotels start you have these big boulders and then he said that look here the waves of the ocean come and they come straight and they strike onto those boulders why are these big boulders put here and what's the philosophy of all of this it is so that the original wealth and these great huge hotels and buildings can be protected similarly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept some miles distance away from the original uh, wealth which is and lies in the heart and, and what, what are those huge rocks that Allah Ta'ala has put for us? It is the eyes, it is the ears, and it is the tongue. And by means of that, we protect the original wealth which is in the heart. But if a person does not look after his eyes, his ears, and then his tongue, then what will then be the condition that heart will become completely uh, polluted? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of making hifazat of our eyes, ears and tongue so that our hearts can become mahfuz. Allah ta'ala protect our hearts. Nevertheless, I was in Gujarat somewhere and a Madani person came and he says, Hazrat Maulana, you see all these people, all these people sitting here, you know why they sit in your majlis? Because your majlis, the like of it is such and the reality of it is such that there is no sheikh except that you mention something and something about him. And the people here, all of them are munsalik to some of the sheikh and the other. So that's why they come and they have taken on to you. From all of this, we understand that the asal and the essence is that of Islam. When we went to Bombay, Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib then emphasized so much that you people have come here to this big city center. Now look after and make hifazat of your eyes. Nes bimari, chu bimari dil. There is no ailment, sickness or disease greater than the disease and the ailment of the heart. Allah inna fil jasadi la mudgha. Ida saluhat saluhal jasadu kullu wa ida fasadat fasadal jasadu kullu. Behold, there is a piece of flesh in the heart of, uh, 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 in the body of man. If it is rectified, then the entire body will be straight. And if it is corrupt, then listen, the entire body will go the wrong way. It will become corrupt. Corrupt. So if you want, Hazarwala quotes some couplets, if you want to become the maqbool of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then look after these organs of yours. Look after these organs of yours. It is an imtihan to look after the great place, the tajalliga of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Khaja Muhammad Masum speaks about the great nur that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless to the body and the external organs which we call actually the zahir i mean the hadith speaks about it where we make wudu sajda etc then uh, imam abu hanifa for that reason also much over and above uh, the elbows he would wash 
because the noor would go so much then further. But Allah Ta'ala will give these Zahiri Aza on the day of Qiyamah so much noor, so much noor, so much noor that even the batin, the heart will become ashamed looking at the noor of the Zahir. So all of this year is so that we can make our Islah. You know there was a Buzruk uh, and he quotes and he says that the greatest time that we see the manifestation of the obedience of a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at the time of iftari. He's sitting, he's hungry, he's pale, he's thirsty, the food is halal, it is right in front of him. It's just a matter of him taking it and putting it in his mouth. But he doesn't do it because he doesn't want to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That food is halal, it belongs to him. And this is the mashk that we are making and uh, being trained during the holy month of Ramadan. Then after the month of Ramadan or at any time for that matter, will a person even go towards haram? Haram se bacho, stay very far away from haram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this ilm and this amal. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of making qadr of the holy month of Ramadan. Allah Ta'ala bless us with, with his muhabbat um, and his ma'rifat. Ilahi maqsudeh man tu hi wa rizai tu. Muhabbat wa ma'rifat e khudbideh. O Allah, my goal and my objective is only you and your recognition. Therefore, bless me with your love. O oh Allah, my goal and my objective is only you and your pleasure. Therefore, bless me with your love and your recognition. Hazrat Wala thereafter quotes the Ibarat of Fathul Bari, Muhabbatullahi ala qismain. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be distributed or categorized into two groups and categories, Fardun wa Nurubun, which one which is Farad and one which is uh, Nafal. Wa kathalik Muhabbatul Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And similarly, the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the love of the Buzruks also, because they are showing us the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us that dua as well Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbaka wa hubba may yuhibbuka wa hubba amali yuqarribu ila hubbik oh Allah I ask you for your love and the love of the one who loves you and the love of that amal which brings me closer to your love Allah ta'ala give us the love of Raza and the love of tilawat because that is وَحُبَّ عَمَلِي يُقَرِّبُ إِلَىٰ حُبِّكَ The love of those a'mal that will take us closer to Allah. Allah Ta'ala let His Noor be distributed throughout the entire world. Allah Ta'ala bless the entire world and the entire Ummah with afiyat. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq in the hidayat of making zikr of Allah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afiyah wa dawam al-afiyah wa shukr ala al-afiyah wa al-ghina ani al-nas. Allah Ta'ala bless us with the genuine and true wealth of iman, with the wealth of his nisbat and this great bond and strong connection with him. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of making qadr of Ramadan. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'u al-alim wa tub alayna innaka anta at-tawabu al-rahim bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.